The early 1980s were considered the wild, wild west of video game development. Long before every proof of concept had been done to death ten times over, programmers were still experimenting with groundbreaking graphics and innovative gameplay. One such game came along that appealed to the male demographic between the ages of 13 to 80. The 13-year-old gamer would enjoy the eye candy while the 80-year-old gamer would appreciate the strategy of the gameplay. No, I'm not talking about Samantha Fox Strip Poker. I'm talking about Crystal Castles, the innovative action game from Atari. What monster Atari head did this game start out as a sequel to? What was the original name of Bentley Bear? So grab those gems and watch out for the bees, because this is the history of Crystal Castles. The year is 1982 and programmer Franz Xaver Lanzinger has just landed his dream job at Atari. At the time, Atari was the big kahuna and it was the place to be for young programmers with a creative imagination. To get started, he was tasked with picking out a project out of Atari's big book which included approved game ideas. He decided to go to work on something called Toporoids which was a reimagining of Atari's massive hit, Asteroids. For a few months, he worked on the 3D backgrounds for the game, which were very similar to the ones found in Crystal Castles. He was inspired by the works of M.C. Escher, and even had a few of his posters in his office. The early prototype for the game involved you moving a one-legged robot or a spaceship around a 3D maze, surrounded by asteroids with which you had to shoot. He decided to change the robot into a more friendly looking character and came up with something that looked very similar to E.T. This was later changed into a teddy bear. He had scattered gems across the playfield for the main character to collect. This was when he knew he had a solid game here but no theme. A lot of ideas were thrown around but they decided to use a fairy tale theme which was inspired by the Wizard of Oz. These included a witch, a moving tree, angry bees, and a bear. All things found in the woods. The original name of Bentley Bear was Braveheart Bear, but at the time the Atlanta Braves were going through a controversy with the Native Americans, so the use of Brave was not politically correct. They held a contest in the engineering department to pick out a name for the character and Bentley Bear won out. Mr. Lanzinger was always a huge video game fan and during development was playing a lot of Centipede. He loved the precision control that the trackball offered, so he decided to use this in his game. This was the first arcade game to include a hidden warp zone. Mr. Lanzinger wanted expert players to have the option of skipping the easy levels. He also wanted to keep playtime at an all-time low so it would generate more quarters. All of the musical themes that are used throughout the game are taken from classical music. The music when you first start the game and the bonus life are both from the Mephisto Waltz by List. The last gem bonus music is from one of the scenes in Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. And the triumphant theme played when you complete level 10 is of course from the 1812 Overture, again from Tchaikovsky. If you notice, all of these classical pieces are in the public domain because at the time there was no way to license any sort of music for video game use. Speaking of completing level 10, this was one of the first games to include a definitive ending instead of looping forever as all other games did at the time. Mr. Lanzinger had to argue with his bosses at Atari and even wrote a two page document stating his case. The document must have done the trick because he ended up winning over his bosses. The game is loaded with secrets including the previously mentioned warp zones. For example, if you jump 128 times, the next screen will have the word Atari stretched across the entire play area. Crystal Castles was released in 1983 by Atari. You take on the role of Bentley. A kleptomaniac bear with a heart of gold who just happens to have a 300 gem a day habit. 
This game is a variation of the Collect the Dots premise found in Pac-Man, but with more enemies and different strategies. You have to collect all the gems before advancing on to the next stage, all the while avoiding the various enemies. You do have the ability to jump, and you'll need it because you'll encounter bees, skeletons, gem meters, killer bowling balls, killer trees, Berthilda the Witch, and goats. This is truly the stuff of nightmares, or else you're just having a bad LSD trip. If you jump over a tree, it will shrink and temporarily disable it. If you pick up the red hat, you are granted invincibility and can kill the witch, but you have to hurry because it's only temporary. Certain levels contain a large pot of honey, and every five or so seconds, bees will appear nearby. If you collect the honey, you get a 1000 point bonus and the bees will appear infrequently. If you touch a gem meter while he is eating a gem, he will die and you will get 500 points. If he is not eating and you touch him, you will die. The game takes place across 37 screens with each level having 4 screens and level 10 only having 1. The game is loaded to the brim with secrets. One such example is if you get a high score, then your initials will appear on the landscape of level 1 of the following game. The trackball was an excellent choice because it allows precision controls that you just can't get with a joystick. Something that often gets overlooked when talking about these classic arcade games are the cabinets themselves. Crystal Castle has to be one of the most gorgeous cabinets I've ever seen. This definitely turned some heads when it first appeared in arcades and bowling alleys back in 1983. It is definitely a work of art. There are two distinct flavors of cabinets including an upright model and a cocktail model. The game was an immediate success when it launched into the arcades. Players loved the innovative graphics and the precision gameplay that the trackball allowed. A number of home conversions were released and some of them turned out pretty good, but only some of them. The first one we are taking a look at is the Atari 2600 version. Now I don't know what I'm looking at, but I sure don't see anything remotely resembling a castle, let alone a crystal one. While the Atari 2600 tries its best, it just can't compete with the state of the art graphics found in the arcade game. This was another bone of contention with the original programmer Mr. Lanzinger, because they wouldn't let him work on the Atari 2600 version. Let's start out with Bentley. He's naked for Pete's sake. Also, what's up with the colors? I've seen more colors on a Spectrum game. The sound effects and music are faithful to the arcade game, but how does it play? Not very good. It feels like Bentley Bear is stuck in the mud as you try to collect all the gems. It's a shame this version didn't turn out a little bit better. Speaking of lack of color, the Spectrum version is up next and despite the lack of color, it's a pretty good attempt. The backgrounds look very faithful to the arcade game, but the sprites and animation leave a lot to be desired. Despite using a joystick instead of a trackball, the controls have translated pretty well. The speed of the gameplay is very close to that of the arcade original. There is virtually no sound to speak of, so perhaps that's not a bad thing. The gameplay is decent, but doesn't quite feel like Crystal Castles. When the Amstrad version first starts up, it looks really good. The backgrounds are rendered very smooth and fast, but then the game starts up. The animation is so choppy and the graphics so sloppy it makes it seem like you're playing a first generation in television game. The sound is absolutely atrocious with a constant buzzing sound whenever Bentley Bear makes a move. The music is completely different from the arcade game. The controls have that similar stuck in the mud feeling that the Atari 2600 version had. Rumor has it that publisher US Gold was embarrassed by the quality of this product and only issued one print run on the game. The game was later given out as a cover disc on certain gaming magazines. The BBC Micro version is up next and it's a very good conversion. The backgrounds are faithful to the arcade and the sprites are nice and detailed with a fair amount of color. The sound effects are adequate although the music has been changed from the arcade game. Now even though you don't get to use a trackball to control Bentley in this version, the joystick doesn't do too bad of a job. The gameplay is fast and matches the speed of the arcade original. The Apple II version certainly looks the part and thankfully it plays great too. The backgrounds are very detailed and colorful and use the same patterns as found in the arcade game. The animation is a little choppy but the speed of the gameplay is on par with its big brother. 
The sound effects and music are represented well, including the actual tunes from the arcade game. The Atari XE version is really well done, aside from one glaring thing. Bentley Bear looks to have been dipping into his honeypot just a bit too often and appears to be pushing around the 400 pound mark. Apparently he is so big he has outgrown his clothes because he's running around naked similar to the Atari 2600 version. The last time I was this outraged, embarrassed, and confused was when I realized Donald Duck didn't wear pants. All nakedness aside, this is a really well done conversion. The animation is very smooth, possibly the smoothest of all the home conversions. The gameplay is nice and fast and feels like the arcade game. To top it off, we have excellent sound effects and music from the arcade game. The good old Commodore 64 version is another quality port right up there with the Atari XE version. While the graphics are a bit blockier, the sprites are much more detailed. The animation is nice and smooth as is the gameplay. The sound effects are very faithful to the arcade game and we do get the actual music thanks to the wonderful SID chip. And finally we come to the only 16-bit home computer entry, the Atari ST version. Graphically, this is very close to the arcade game. The backgrounds are nice and detailed along with the sprites offering a variety of colors. The only thing that lets it down as far as the graphics go is the animation. Everything is just a little too choppy for my liking. The sound effects are good and the music is really well done thanks to the advanced capabilities of the Atari ST. The controls are good although nothing can top the actual arcade trackball experience. In the mid 1980s Atari brought out a series of educational titles for the Atari ST featuring Bentley Bear. Among these were spelling and math so if I ever need to brush up on these subjects I'll be sure to spend a few hours with good old Bentley Bear. In the mid 2000s the game was also released on Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network. Thanks to the wonderful people at the Arcade 1UP Company, you are now able to experience Crystal Castles in all of its wonderful glory the way it was meant to be played with a trackball. In the Centipede Minicab, which also features Millipede and Missile Command, you'll find an arcade perfect version of Crystal Castles. This is the only way to experience the game with the precision control that a trackball will allow. Okay. Crystal Castles was definitely an innovation at the time. It took the tried and true formula of collecting dots but up the ante in terms of graphics, gameplay, as well as secrets. Everything about this arcade game was unique from the style of the gameplay to the precision trackball controls. Even the cabinet was a sight to behold. It's one of those games that starts out fairly easy but gets really hard really quick. It still is a lot of fun though. So if you ever have the chance to spend a few minutes with good old Bentley Bear, you'll be glad you did. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my little channel can grow. Thank you for watching.